Hello and welcome back to Pix and Portraits. Welcome back to our brief history of computer animation. So far this season, we've looked at CGI on television from the 1970s all the way up to the turn of the millennium. We've seen network graphics, commercials, music videos, and early cartoon series all animated with computers. Rather than move forward uh, to the rise of DreamWorks and the dominance of Pixar, which are well-trodden topics, even in this series, <laughs> I thought we'd hang out here for a bit and look at something that doesn't get talked about as much. Virtual cartoon adaptations. This was a phenomenon mostly in the 90s, where properties that were animated traditionally were adapted into CGI, usually in the form of an interactive experience. These were marketed as video games, PC games, though they weren't always challenging or even fun to play. I do think, though, that they offer a fascinating glimpse into the early progress of computer animation. It's easy to look past a lot of the imperfections of early CGI when the content is original. <laughs> the way it's animated, Putt-Putt is supposed to look like that, uh, or this, but uh, when a character is established and there are expectations of how they should look and move, it's noticeable. In no way is this going to be exhaustive. We are going to be looking at a selection of games, starting with 1990's Bugs Bunny Cartoon Workshop. Bugs Bunny, one of the most beloved and recognized characters in all of animation, he is closely associated with the Golden Age cartoons, starred in many classic shorts, and this game gave you control over him. This was developed by Novo Trade and High Tech Expression, which adapted a lot of different cartoon properties into games. Uh, Tom and Jerry, Bobby's World. <laughs> Apparently at one point they were working on a Twin Peaks game, uh, which I wish we would have gotten that. Pretty ambitious for the time, it is a very basic animation studio that let users create their own short animated sequences using Warner characters. It gives you different backgrounds, uh, familiar to the shorts, so a uh, forest and a desert, as well as many others. You could also add sound effects and a MIDI score, and uh, make your own cartoon. Compared to the work of Chuck Jones, this is pretty stiff. <laughs> the characters move, uh, or more or less, float across the screen, but the animation is fluid enough that some other personality does get through. Obviously, it's not hand-drawn. These are sprites, digital 2D images that move and respond to inputs. How detailed and how many of these sprites could appear on screen relied on the system's processing power. We will see, as technology advances and power increased, so did the size and quality of the sprites. But here, in 1990, you can only express so much with just a handful of images. The Simpsons would execute this idea much better six years later with their own cartoon studio. Compared to Bugs, the individual animations here are much smoother, uh, though they do not always gel well together. Still, there's a lot to be desired. After all, by 1996, we had already seen how Bart and Homer looked in CG. We covered this last time, Homer Cubed, that came out a year before this and looked amazing for 1995. Today, the show was created using both hand-drawn and computer animation. It's been that way since around season 14, though the first episode to employ digital coloring was season 7's Radioactive Man. Still computer animation. The show's first foray into the virtual world was the Simpsons arcade game back in 1991. Its rise also coincided with that of Nintendo, at least in America, and plenty of games came out for the NES and Game Boy. Now the Simpsons games have a bit of a reputation, rightfully earned, of being terrible. For such a successful series that was relevant at a time when games were exploding, you would think uh, they would be better. One of the more positive examples, while not exactly a game, was Virtual Springfield. This set out to create a living Springfield players could walk around in. It was produced when The Simpsons was still, arguably, <laughs> at its creative peak in 1997. It features the entire voice cast, including Phil Hartman, which is such a treasure <laughs> to get more Troy McClure. It approximates Springfield and renders it in 3D. It is an open world, uh, sort of, <laughs> in that you can travel uh, through it in first person so you aren't really playing as anybody, which makes it more immersive as you interact with the community. It's point and click, so you click on an object uh, or a person and it responds. You can go around to different locales and interact with characters. It lets you browse magazines at the Quickie Mart. Uh, games from the show are playable, uh, which I think is such a cool addition at the Noiseland Arcade. The game is just packed, full of easter eggs and fan service. Uh, some bits are recycled from the series, but there is a ton of original content here. The animation is clunky. Obviously this was never going to compete with Homer Cubed, but the mouth movements don't always sync with what's being spoken, and the movement is far from fluid. Still though, a great experience, uh, at least if you're a fan of the series. Fun piece of trivia. 
Creating the 3D model of the Simpsons home led to the construction of the real-life Simpsons house that would be given away in a contest. Apparently, though, <laughs> the person who won it didn't want it. Neighbors hated it. According to the current owners, uh, people just walk up and try to walk in, which sounds like a nightmare. Uh, looking it up and uh, researching it a bit, the whole thing just seems like a mess. The Simpsons inspired several series in the wake of its popularity, and many of these received their own virtual experiences. Even before Virtual Springfield, Beavis and Butthead got Virtual Stupidity in 1995. Same idea as Virtual Springfield, you point and click your way around Highland, but unlike Virtual Springfield, this actually has a plot. You play as Beavis and Butthead, who are trying to join Todd's gang. For those unfamiliar with the series, this is a deadbeat they idolize, uh, someone they're always trying to impress. Besides the in-game interactions, there are full motion video sequences that move this narrative along, uh, three of which are music videos with commentary, including songs by Primus and Guar, which is a great detail, very cool. Beavis and Butthead's animation style lent itself very nicely to the limited capabilities of 1995's computers. The animation in the FMV scenes is pretty close to what you would have seen on TV. The actual gameplay doesn't look that bad either, especially in the mini games, the bigger sprites, uh, more detail. My Judge's other series, King of the Hill, also got a Vigi game in 2000. Now, this is really two games, Texas Hunting and Hoot Nanny. Texas Hunting is a hunting simulator where you play you. <laughs> like in Virtual Springfield, the characters interact with you directly. They invite you to the Arlen Hunting Club. You can browse hunting magazines, choose where you want to hunt, and what gear to bring with you. Uh, this is very repetitive. <laughs> you can run through the dialogue options pretty quickly, uh, and it gets old very fast. That can be said, really, about all of these, but with the other games we're covering, I feel like there is more to at least see. Here, you're just stuck waiting. Um, very boring. Hootenanny, on the other hand, is more lively. It is a virtual experience where you are a new neighbor visiting a block party. You can interact with the characters and play mini-games. King of the Hill is not known for its animation, uh, more for the characters, and their personalities really shine here. Like with Virtual Springfield, the voice cast is all here. We can really see just how far technology has come. I believe this was created with Flash, uh, certainly looks like it. It has a cleaner look, still a little awkward, but it plays more like Virtual Springfield and is much better <laughs> than Texas Hunting. Most of these virtual games run between 90 minutes and 3 hours. It can feel like several episodes worth of content that, because of the platform they were produced for, is more or less lost to time, at least for the average fan. However, some playthroughs do exist if you want to experience these games uh, without the satisfaction of clicking. I think the inclusion of the voice cast alone makes each of them worth checking out, so I will post links in the description. I am very interested in further exploring how traditional animation has been adapted to CGI, video games or otherwise. I'm hoping it to actually do a whole season around video games eventually, uh, but right now I'd like to keep focused on TV. Uh, I am no expert, so feel free to correct or comment down below. Apologies as well for the gap between episodes. Every time I get uh, working on this series, I found something that was just perfect for future tunes like Cyber Weapon Z or uh, Playboy's Dark Justice. <laughs> Weird uh, forgotten CGI, which seemed like a better fit uh, for the channel. Again, there are plenty of videos on Pixar and DreamWorks. I would rather find things and uh, show you stuff that maybe gets missed uh, or is at least a little less known. So knowing that, there shouldn't be too long between this and the next episode. If you enjoyed this one, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. Gotta plug the Patreon as well. <laughs> we are currently working our way through the animated output of the NFB, the National Film Board of Canada over there. $5 a month gets you access to that and dozens of other exclusive videos and series, like Century of Schlock, looking at 100 years of animated smut. Um, I don't do this for money. <laughs> I would not keep doing this uh, if I didn't like doing it. Content will always be made, uh, whether or not it's profitable, but if you like what we do and you want to see even more come out more regularly, please consider becoming a patron. Patreon.com slash Portraits. As always, thank you so much for your interest in this channel, and thanks for watching. See you in the future.